the big difference we have seen, um, between, you know, if we, if we analyze what had happened to us as well and what has happened in the market and compare it to Silicon Valley, again, coming back to what I mentioned earlier is the culture. So what you find there is you have an entrepreneur who understands he's onto something very attractive, um, who will then st start out of his garage, so really bootstrapping quite aggressively um, to, to crystallize what his value proposition is, try and get some kind of proof of concept in the market. That's always something you need. Look at a Facebook, for example. There was not a lot of money being generated there, but the proof of concept was just how they went viral so quickly and they could afford to hang on to it for long, which was great because they had some backers at, at a very early stage. And that's basically what you then try to do. But you, um, because you know that there's an institutional, out, you know, that the market is institutionalized for this venture capital, you can even afford to go to two or three players and even start playing them off against each other, trying to see who would fit you better, who offers you better terms and conditions. While in South Africa, very often you kind of need to go with the first name that knocks on your door because they, you won't have that many chances at, at attracting that kind of capital. And because in South Africa the market is quite small, we have found that the, mo the best ideas in South Africa typically get backed by people within their networks, very personal networks. And that's why you have Cape Town, you have Silicon, you've got Stellenbosch to some extent, a lot of uh, very tight networks there. And it's very seldom that someone would come to knock on our door and say, Trivest, could you fund me? I'm sitting in Stellenbosch. Because they have typically from Res or from Uni or from, you know, from the networks there, they have access to that capital. And so that, that culture doesn't necessarily exist in South Africa of saying, once I've then invested, I need two or three years to you know, generate the first profits to then go and attract further capital. But typically, that is then the right time to step out of it as the entrepreneur and say, today, now is a better time for someone else to take over from me. Very often we find in South Africa, especially a culture of a little bit of, you know, the risk taking, which is great, which you need this entrepreneurial drive, which we have a lot of in South Africa, but getting that same person to understand the requirements to corporatize a company, to get it ready for the next round of investment or the next growth phase is very, very difficult. Um, and that's got to do with education. It's got to do with, you know, exposure to the international community. Um, and, and obviously those things are changing and they've been changing for a while, but these processes are long-term processes. Thank <music> you.